We're here today because of a very special person, Peter Edward Oliver. And I feel that it is my duty, my obligation, to thoroughly embarrass Peter in front of all his family, friends, and colleagues. So I'll do the best I can. So I got to thinking, what is it about Peter that makes him special? And I thought, well, there are 10 words that characterize him. And I think you, you probably, um, three of these words are pretty obvious and it will come to everyone's mind pretty quickly. That I think that we all think of Peter, when we think of Peter, we think of teacher. We also think of him as a singer. And then over the last two and a half years, unfortunately, we've, we've thought of the cancer. So let me talk about those three words, first of all, and then we'll get to the other seven. So teacher refers to what Peter has essentially done his entire life, either as a science and maths teacher at Mullaney State High School or through his work as a natural resources officer in the Queensland government or as a senior lecturer at the Master of Integrated Water Management Program at, through the International Water Center. As we already heard from Paul, Peter developed a variety of novel approaches to teaching, having sand, students build sandcastles on, on Strandbrook Island, singing about digestion or line dancing as amino acids. Students remember Peter's lectures and field trips and he produces lasting educational experiences. Deep learning. The second word, singer, refers to Peter's integration of song with many facets of his life, including environmental issues. Peter will show up on field trips or workshops, like today, with his guitar, and, but will also sing a cappella at the drop of a hat. I remember the first time I went on a field trip with Peter and we were out in Deception Bay and we had a dive team in and out of the water and during the breaks he would regale us with songs related to the discussion we were having about catchments and water quality and runoff. What Peter does is uses these songs to connect people in powerful ways and I feel like a session with Peter is not complete without a song creeping in so we got to make sure he produces a song today. Well let's let's bring out the big bad cancer word. It refers to an insidious disease that's resulted in Peter's enduring numerous chemotherapy and radiation sessions, surgical procedures, and medical tests, too numerous to, to, to elaborate on. But what Peter has done is he's, he's not let cancer define him simply as a victim. In the face of this cancer, Peter has defined himself as a man of great courage, unflagging spirit, and incredible strength. Peter is always comforting us when we go to comfort him. He's also been publicly advocating for better lung cancer awareness, treatment, and research. Okay, so those are the things we all know about Peter in this very public way. But there are seven other words that are less obvious that I think are particularly important in the life of Peter Oliver. These words are family, pirates, Lingvia, Dugong, Connections, Philosophy, and Love. I'll start with family. Family is really important to Peter. He was born into a teacher's family in 1957. Peter's parents, Colette Oliver, sitting here, and the late Ted Oliver, raised their family of five children in various locations throughout Australia. Uh, Peter's brother Tim and sister uh, Sandra are here, as, long, as well as numerous nieces and nephews. Peter's eyes sparkle when he talks about his family, particularly his wife and children. I've never had an extended discussion with Peter in which he didn't mention Anne in glowing terms. And Peter and Anne have raised three very special children, Jane, Katie, and Michael, who are here in their Mullaney house. The word pirate, where does that come from? Well, this is particularly relevant for Peter. You might not know, he has an alter ego. His, his alter, al, alter ego is Pirate Pete, sometimes known as Greybeard. At one point it might have been Blackbeard, but it's been Greybeard for a while. As a catchment coordinator, Peter dressed up as Pirate Pete. He growls, Arg! in a very convincing way, and engaged people on the street 
at, uh, in discussions about catchment issues at, at Shoppington. More recently at the Relay for Life uh, uh, event at the Mullaney Showgrounds, which raises funds and awareness for cancer survivors, Peter's family, he can get some family and friends to join this pirate band, and uh, known as the Jolly Ollies, and they terrorize the other groups who are less fierce with their arms. The sixth word, lingbian, refers to a, a, a scientific name for a really noxious slime that grows in Morton Bay. It was what first brought me in contact with Peter 15 years ago. Peter was developing a working relationship with fishermen of Deception Bay region, like Craig Savage here, and they asked him to do something about the slime that was causing severe skin rashes. So Peter showed up at the University of Queensland carrying a bag of the slime and going from lab to lab and saying, what is this? Anybody know what this is? Until we came to my lab and it turned out my wife, Judy, had uh, just done her dissertation on blue-green algae or cyanobacteria and she was able to identify this slime as lingbian or cyanobacterium. So Peter and a bunch of us uh, developed, proceeded to develop an active lingbia research and management program, which continues to the present, includes some of the same fishermen like Greg Savage who first identified the problem. Seventh word is dugong, referring to these large marine mammals, the original sailors mermaids or sea sirens that help make Moreton Bay so special. If you stand on one of the Glasshouse Mountains and look to the east, and view Bradby Island. You can imagine Bradby Island is a giant dugong feeding on deception based sea grasses. Peter's written a song called Dugong Rock, which I hope we get to hear today, which has inspired all kinds of singing, dancing, and considerable cavorting. He recently sang a verse of Dugong Rock in his acceptance speech when he won the Healthy Waterways Champion Award in 2012. There's a large stuffed dugong known as Dewey. He's been spotted at various locations throughout the Queensland catchments. He was inspired by Peter. Peter even has a fighting dugong tattooed on his arm to signify his battle against cancer. The title of the book that Peter and I are collaborating on is Dancing with Dugongs. Incidentally, I just want to make a public statement here that working on this book with Peter was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Dugongs are clearly a theme in Peter's life I often wonder if Peter sees a personal resemblance in the rotund, <laughs> whiskered beast. The eighth word, connections, refers to Peter's ability to connect people to each other, to connect people to land and water, and to connect people to a deeper understanding of life. When Peter walks into the room, it isn't, here I am, it's, there you are. Peter loves making unlikely connections. He thrives on getting fishermen talking with ministers for the envir environment, marine biologists talking with land managers, or catchment coordinators dressed as pirates talking with motorbikers. Peter leads interesting and informative field trips, which really do serve to connect students to land and water. Peter also catalyzes a deeper understanding of life through sharing his experiences and encouraging self-guided learning. And in spite of illness or distance, Peter has remained connected both to his IWC colleagues in Brisbane and even US colleagues via Skype and connected to his family and friends through houseboat trips and wood-fired pizza parties and visits to Mullaney. The ninth word, philosophy, refers to Peter's approach to life and death and his intellectual, ongoing journey of learning. Peter received his Bachelor of Science degree from Griffith University in 1978. This is the first of many degrees. He received his Diploma of Education from the University of Queensland in 1981, his Master's of Education from Deakin University in 1995, and Peter's dissertation was entitled Developing Effective Partnerships in Natural Resource Management and received his Doctor of Philosophy from Griffith University in 2004. Note that Peter's highest degree is Doctor of Philosophy, 
Yes, ma'am. A doctor of science, a doctor of education, a doctor of philosophy. That's what PhD stands for, and Peter embodies that by reading widely, thinking deeply, and writing eloquently. The final word, love, refers to what's brought us together today. There's a great line from one of my favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz. And the wizard is talking to the Tin Man and trying to convince him that he really does have a heart. And he says the following to the Tin Man. A heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. I'd like to modify the last word of this quote in inviting Peter Edward Oliver to the podium to present his retirement lecture. So Peter, as you gaze out on, on all of us here, please think of these words. A heart is not judged by how much you love, but how much you are loved by others. Thanks very much, Good